I was about to say that this video is going to deviate from the channel's usual content, but then I looked at my previous videos and I'm all over the map. So this video fits perfectly to everything else in my channel. So let's talk about the least sexy topic ever, file management and storage. As a creative person, I'm sure you're in the same boat. You have a ton of files all over the place, so it gets difficult to manage. You have some files on your computer's hard disk, others in other external drives or a USB stick, some other files on an SSD drive, and so on and so forth. The more data you produce, the more difficult it gets to manage it. Not to mention making sure that if something goes horribly wrong, you have a backup to recover from. I'm exactly at this point right now. I have this uh, Drobo 5D3, which acts as the main hub for most of my files, but I'm quickly outgrowing it. At the same time, because of the sheer size of the data, I'm having a hard time maintaining backups of all of these files. And we all know that can turn ugly real fast. The internal hard drives of both Macs are backed up daily, but the Drobo is backed up every couple of months because it's a real hassle to do. But let me start from the beginning. I'll first go through the issues I'm having with my workflow, and then I'll tell you what I'm planning to do to solve this mess. Maybe that will be useful to you and will give you some ideas on how to improve your file management workflow. This is going to be the first of maybe two or uh, three videos, I'm not sure yet. I'm still in the process of uh, ordering everything I need, uh, setting things up, etc. It'll be interesting to see how it will <laughs> all turn out. I'm going to share my experience with you, so if there's something that didn't work out, at least you know <laughs> not to repeat it. So let's first identify the issues I'm having. The first one has to do with the lack of expandability. Let me explain what I mean by that. In theory, a five bay system like the Drobo sounds like a really nice solution. With five bays, it feels like there's a lot of room to grow. You can slowly add drives to it. So as your data grows, the system grows with you. But there comes a point where it gets really expensive trying to increase the storage you already have. This has nothing to do with uh, Drobo, but with how RAID works. And that's because of redundancy. For a system with so many disks, you need to ensure that if something happens to one of them, your data will be safe. A RAID 5 system does just that, ensures that if one disk fails, your data will still be safe. Of course, that means you have to sacrifice the space of one disk, but it's a necessary evil. So a RAID 5 system made out of four uh, 10 terabyte drives is not going to give you 40 terabytes of storage space. It'll give you 30 terabytes. With a RAID 6 setup, your data is protected from two concurrent drive failures. But that of course means you sacrifice two drives in the process. So four 10 terabyte drives will give you 20 terabytes of storage. Now let's see what happens with uh, five base systems like the Drobo. First off, Drobo is using its own proprietary system, so in single disk uh, redundancy, you're losing a couple more terabytes compared to our regular RAID 5. So a Drobo with a single disk redundancy and with five 10 terabyte drives gives us around 36 terabytes of storage instead of 40 terabytes. Not a huge deal, but something to keep in mind. Now let's see what happens with five 10 terabyte drives and dual disk redundancy. As expected, the storage space is quite a bit less, a little bit over 27 terabytes of uh, storage. Now let's say we want to expand the storage and we want to add a 14 terabyte drive. Adding one 14 terabyte drive doesn't increase the storage space at all. It just reserves some of it for the future. As a matter of fact, to start seeing some extra space, we need to get two more drives. So that's three 14 terabyte drives to increase the space just by four terabytes. That means spending 1,248 euros for just four terabytes of data. That is a terrible return of investment. Again, this is not a Drobo specific problem. It just has to do with how RAID works. With a five bay Drobo to upgrade to 40 terabytes of space, we would have to replace all drives with 14 terabyte disks. That's a whopping 2,080 euros for 11 terabytes more than what we started with. Obviously, this is not worth it at all. And on top of that, keep in mind that I haven't even discussed the process of upgrading this setup. It would literally take days to rebuild. Replacing a single drive on a RAID can take easily half a day or more, depending on the size of the disk. Even if we upgraded two drives at a time, which is not really advisable, we're still talking about days worth of rebuild time. 
with the hard drives constantly working for days. Your data would still be accessible, but working with that system while it's rebuilding would just add more time to the whole process. The solution for all this insanity <laughs> is a system with more than five bays. So let's check a Synology's calculator where we can add more than five drives. Having the same setup as before, so five 10 terabyte drives, but more bays, allows us to reach the 40 terabyte we want by just adding a single 14 terabyte drive. That's 1,600 euros less for approximately the same amount of storage. I think it's obvious that this is the way to go. So for me at least, an 8-bay system is the solution. It's a good compromise between storage space, noise, and price. Now that we have that sorted, let's see what else we can improve. My next couple of issues have to do with uh, Drobo as a device. The most annoying thing of all is the noise. It's just an incredibly loud system. I've seen some reviews measuring it at around 50 dBs, so you can imagine how that feels when it's sitting right next to you. So most of the times I just turn it off and just work with the internal drives and this uh, Samsung SSD. When the project is done, I just turn on the Drobo, dump the files, and quickly turn it off again. But yeah, this is far from an efficient way of uh, working. And then there's the hacky way these storage is created. It's not a hack exactly, but it feels like it. We cannot just see how much storage we have left. If you're used to checking the hard drive space through the OS like a normal person, well, forget about that. We need to go to Drobo's utility to see that. As a matter of fact, you need to install Drobo's third-party utility for the drive to actually load. Without it, the drive won't be recognized by the system at all. And things get even more complicated when more than one computers are added into the mix. If I need to grab a file, for example, and work on the laptop, I need to disconnect the Drobo from the iMac and connect it to the laptop. Or airdrop it from the iMac to the laptop, which can take a long time if the project is uh, several gigabytes in size. It's a pain. And uh, <laughs> finally, the other issue that needs to be taken care of is file syncing. Because it's hard to move files to and from Drobo, I end up having all sorts of files spread out throughout all of the computers. There were times where I had multiple versions of the same file on all three computers, which meant I had to figure out which version was the latest one, which other files I needed to store along with uh, the other file, and so on and so forth. So. The good thing is that all of these issues can be solved at once. So let's go backwards for a moment. The solution for having a central place all computers can access is just really simple. It means owning a NAS. There's no other way around that. You can load files from it, and most importantly, you can save to it. No need to grab the file from the NAS, work locally, and then move it back to the NAS. So to recap, for my personal needs, I need so far an 8-bay NAS system. So what I'm going to go with is the DS1819 Plus. It's an 8-bay NAS with software that apparently uses swearby, but most importantly, it can serve the computers at really high speeds. The iMac Pros come with a 10 gigabit per second Ethernet uh, port, and the 1819 Plus has the ability to deliver those speeds through a 10 gigabit uh, per second expansion card. The last part that needs to be solved is the whole noise issue. And this is the part I'm kinda hoping for the best. I know from the spec sheet that the 1819 Plus operates at uh, 20.8 decibels without any disks inside, so I'm kinda hoping it won't go above uh, 50 decibels with all bays occupied. That's probably wishful thinking, but there's not much else I can do there. The drives I'm planning to use are the Western Digital Reds. They are less noisy than the Seagate Sirenwolf uh, Pro drives, but they are mechanical drives, so no matter what, they will be noisy. Some users uh, replace the Synology's fans, so that's one thing to consider. I will first run it with the default fans, and if the noise is unbearable, I will replace them. I'm also hoping that because the NAS is not going to be sitting right next to me, the noise is going to be less noticeable. It's not going to be in a closet or anything like that, but at least it will be around 3.5 to 4 meters away from me. 
this whole noise issue is the part I'm uh, most afraid of, since I also don't want to turn it off every day. It will run 24-7, but there's no other solution really, so let's see how it goes when the system arrives. The other great thing with the Synology products is that if you run out of space, you can use expansion units for a total of 18 drives. I'm not planning to go there, but it's reassuring that the system can expand as your needs grow, unlike the Drobo 5D3. So far it looks like most of the issues are covered. And now for the final issue, the whole backing up of the NAS system. Currently it's a world of hurt. This drive backs up only the internal drive of this computer, this drive backs up the internal drive of this computer, and finally this older Drobo backs up this computer and the newer Drobo. <laughs> but because it's incredibly slow, like painfully slow, I barely have any backups on it. Each backup requires maybe 10 or more hours, so I'm not really doing backups that often. The solution to this problem is also not very finalized, but I'm planning to do the following, at least in the beginning. I'll still use the two external drives for the internal drives of the computers, but to back up the NAS, I will take advantage of the tools uh, Synology offers. They have this ability to connect a drive to one of the USB ports and have the NAS automatically transfer files to it or from the drive. So my plan is to back up my most important stuff like work projects, photos, etc. to external drives once they are connected to the NAS. It won't need my supervision at all. I can connect a drive and it will grab all that is needed. It's also smart enough to not grab files that are already moved to the drive, so backups will also be relatively fast. So once I retire the Drobos, I will have a ton of drives left, so I will get an external case and just load the drives there. So I could have one drive with all of my work, another one with music and photos, and so on and so forth. Of course, these will be backed up twice, with one copy locally and another one stored outside my office. So that's about it for now. I've just ordered everything needed, and in the next few days I will start receiving all the different uh, components. So we will definitely have a lot to talk about in the next video. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below and let me know also if you want to see something specific on the next uh, video. I will definitely report about the noise and the setup of the whole system, but if there's uh, something else, just uh, let me know and I'll try to cover it. So <laughs> wish me luck and I'll see you on the next one.